One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. <laughs> Welcome back, Draft Kings and Queens, to the Racial Draft Podcast. I am your host, Michael Ford, joined by my co-host, Kia Lisi herself. Kia, what's up? Hi, everybody. This is Kia Lisi. How are you doing? <laughs> Kia is apparently trying to seduce the listeners. And uh, oh yes, <laughs> we are the one hundred joined- laws of seduction. Here I am. <laughs> Hello, be- Randy. Not to be confused with the 48 Laws of Power, but uh, we are joined by, from the Black delegation himself, Randy. Woo, woo. And yeah, we are here to do what we do every week, and that is change the complexion of the comic book universe, one draft pick at a time. And I am looking forward to season three of the Racial Draft, which will kick off in a little bit over a week. And... uh, I got to say, I'm really intrigued by this format change. I'm really intrigued by the bidding wars. Let's get down to bidness. So what we're going to do, you know, we've got some new Even stories. Bidness. We've got some new stories, but, you know, let's let's bounce around some scenarios for, for season three to get, get, get people's mouths watering and, you know, really drooling for, for what's going on, <laughs> you know? Um, wait, I didn't mean it that way, or did I? <laughs> <laughs> I, I am not. I am not nearly mature enough to respond. <laughs> I cannot. <laughs> but for those of you who are, you know, new to the pro- podcast or just, you know, uh, ready to hop on for season three, we're gonna do things a little hop bit. Hop on it. Hop on it. Yeah. <laughs> we're gonna try to. We're gonna try to get. We're gonna figure out the poll situation too. Um, <laughs> I have but, one at my house. <laughs> there you go. Uh, don't forget to support us at uh, the Racial Draft on Patreon, where you can see, uh, you know, how Kia works the polls um, for votes. For votes, <laughs> get your minds out of the gutter, guys. Guys, guys. <laughs> but yeah, it's, so what we're, you know. Things were a little bit different. If you were if you were on on with us in season one and season two, we did our fairly standard snake draft format. But in this upcoming season, we're going we're going to shake it up a little bit. And we're going to do some we're going to do a bidding format. So what's going to happen is that each uh, each delegation is going to throw out a character. Um, they're going to put out an opening bid, and in inherent in that bid is that they're also going to uh, give alongside their bid they're going to give um a little bit of information about what their what the racial draft uh, for that character is going to look like it might include um just a blurb of a you know change to the backstory or it could you know be a fan cast or it could be a visual referent or it could be some fan art of that character in their racially drafted form um but either way if you want to, if you want to place a bid on that character, you have to do the same. You know, you put out a dollar amount, and you put out, you know, another piece of information, and off you That's go. Right. So it did, and you know, at, obviously a lot of people wanted Bat. Uh, a lot of people might want Batman because of all the points that Batman puts up. But you know, you got to figure out what's the right price for the Bat. You know. And listen, the people will still have a say. The people will still be, have the opportunity to chime in and say, uh, you know, who they favor. And maybe that'll affect what the delegates decide. Maybe that'll affect their decisions, of how high they're willing to go with their bids. So I'm, I'm really interested in seeing how it plays out. I think it's going to be super fun. Um, you know, there's going to be a lot of strategy. There's going to be a lot of intrigue. You know, maybe there's going to be some things happening in the back channels where deals are being struck, where people were like, oh, don't bid on this character and I won't bid on this character. Who knows? Um, stay tuned to the podcast. Stay tuned to our social feeds uh, where there will be both public and private bids. Um, so 
uh, I will try my best yes. to keep you abreast of the situation, so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God. And speaking of keeping people abreast, Kia, what are your thoughts of the season two of this? Um, I'm just really excited because at the end of the day, um, I know season two was kind of a bore for some people. You know? <laughs> like, nobody really brought it. Nobody really shut everybody down or anything like that. But don't worry. I'm back, bitches. <laughs> and uh, the multiracial delegation is here. Right? to swing all types of genitalia all around <laughs> and let you all know that we are the best and we are the champions. Kia Lisi, mother of draftings. I'm Kia <laughs> and I'm coming to completion. Oh, wow. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, I'm not sure how you follow that up, but you know, Randy, get your, get your trash talk in on behalf of the black delegation. Um, you, I think we're the last, I think the black delegation was in last place in the first season. But uh, right in, right up in the middle, in season two, so good things so, could be yeah, abound. It's 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 clear that we are uh, finding our footing, and I'm I'm not gonna lie. You know, I, I have a, a bit of a time struggling sometimes with uh, knowing when characters will show up or or you know us outside of the most commonly seen ones. But mm. I, I feel like I'm I'm getting um, a better understanding of of the, the drafting process and and the character appearances and stuff like that so i i you know i, I keep things humble now and, randy and so have you thought about bringing in some you know ringer uh, black moms you know because i feel like they are really good at making the dollar stretch so you know i'm you know right now like with the with the whole bidding situation you know you might need someone to be like you got shazam money you know, I mean, who knows? <laughs> but due to being a single parent, a single a single woman household, all of a sudden now black women tend to only know how to make the dollar stretch. Really, really, Mike? Is this really what you're saying? Uh, I, well, right now? I will I will absolutely be reaching out to some to some uh some intellectuals in the community who, who know Ah, how there we go. The, see the, that? The, see how he said that, Michael? See how mm -hmm. he said that? I like how I said black moms, but you said single moms. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Um, I know what we were, you know, you know what he was referring to, ladies and gents. Touche. But this is what we do here in the racial draft. We make racial jokes because we got to have fun. We had who gonna check us? <laughs> We're already exactly. black. <laughs> we, exactly. Um, <laughs> I just I think that's my new phrase. Who's gonna check us? <laughs> Who's gonna check us? <laughs> Who is going to check us? <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um, yes, but 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 since you're here, Randy, you know, um, if you got any questions before we, you know, before we we sort of like broader questions about how things are going to work since this will be your first time in this format um you know lay, lay them on me and I'll, I'll try to do my best to fill you and the listeners and on on how things are going to play out in season three. Oh well i mean uh for for the more i mean you, you've kind of explained it a, a couple of times so i i think i'm <laughs> well I, I i think i'm good on on what the process will be i just have to kind of be more mindful to reach out to other um you know listeners and fans and things like that so i can kind of get input and as far as like uh the money situation goes because we do have a, a limited amount of money and there's not really any way that we can like get more money or something like that so i, I so wanna... it's funny that you mentioned that key and i were kicking around some ideas before the podcast and i i'm going to uh you know break some news here on the podcast there are going to be opportunities to get bonus cash um mostly it's going to come in the form of getting content for your delegation so if you're out there listeners you know if you have if you're an artist and you want to do fan art for your delegation you can get extra money for your delegation if you submit if you submit some fan art if you you know if you're more a little bit more creative and you want to kind of 
dive in to you know an extensive backstory for this new reimagined character um you know again subject to our backstory restrictions um they can't break the character per se and you still have to remain true to the spirit of the character as they exist in their canon in their you know original canon form but you know presuming that you can do that you can make it work um yeah there's there's maybe some bonus cash to to be to be uh to be attained hmm okay well that that definitely does uh give me some incentive to reach out more and uh you know i i have some some folks who i i know that are um not quite up to the big time yet and so they're they're not commissioning they're doing some work free still so mm -hmm. i can <laughs> reach out to them and, and see what I can do. Yeah. So, I mean, again, we're, we are, we are really trying to expand the tent here in season three and, you know, we're going to have a lot more of sort of wide variety of um, guests, hopefully fingers crossed. Um, and, you know, another thing that I, I am mentioning now that I don't know if I made it clear, we can, we will potentially have a uh, simultaneous bidding wars going on. Um, in order to kind of get get our picks out um, in the in the in the best and you know most um, expeditious way possible, so you know take that into account. You know there may be you know three or four characters being bid on at a given moment. Um, yeah, Kia, do you have any any more trash talk thoughts about <laughs> about what what's going to happen with the multiracial delegation? I'm just going to say, like I said before, I mean, I already said first season, I spoke it to it. I spoke it into existence and I won. That's just how it's going to happen. Again, season three, multiracial team. We're about right. that life. Okay. <laughs> and on that note, I guess it's time to dive into our stories, people. Stories. Um, I'm going, I mean, Kira, you were, you were not here last week, so I'm going to uh, drop a, a couple stories, a couple early stories from last week, um, just, just to, you know, in case you missed it. Um, Black Panther 2 is going to have a, a Latino name war. Are you at all interested in that? No. All it right. needs to be Polynesian. <laughs> Polynesian. Hello. Hello, people. Seriously. Yeah, he's 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 due to have he's, he's probably going to have ties to the Mayan civilization, so they're an ancient civilization. Nobody and, cares uh, about the Mayans. Great. So now you're interested. Now you're in. You're back in because of the Mayans. No, I said nobody cares about them. Oh, Polynesian. <laughs> oh, well, I apologize to all of our Mayan listeners. Um. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because we reached that far. Yeah, I'll apologize when we get one listener. That is Mayan. And we're not talking. Come on, come on, come on, guys. You know, it should be Polynesian. If any uh, guy has to have his shirt off, it should be a Polynesian sexy man, all types of tatted up. Well, we already got Aquaman, though, to be fair. I, I mean, yes, assuming, we need a double. Yeah, I mean, assuming that the Polynesian delegation drafts him. Play both. Two, two seasons and the Polynesian delegation didn't bother to draft Aquaman. That's shocking, shocking in all possible ways. Um, uh, additional news story is that Aquaman, speaking of, uh, he his movie, his sequel, it has an official title called Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. Kia, would you like to turn it into a sexual pun somehow? <laughs> <laughs> How'd you know? I was like, <laughs> Lost Kingdom right here. <laughs> How'd you know? <laughs> you know me. Uh. <laughs> but really, call me Aquaman called me <laughs> yeah jason momoa is going to be uh swimming in it so to speak say his name with respect <laughs> but yeah there's Randy, some... how do you feel about jason momoa i know you're very sexually attracted to him as well i i have very strong feelings about jason momoa <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> Look, I still think they missed the they missed the boat. Even though they made a billion dollars with the first one, the ad campaign for Aquaman, like I had the perfect slogan: "Get wet, 
and like it was right there and i i hope that they use it for for the second one and they missed the boat (laughs) (laughs) Uh, additionally uh another story this is also um well i guess it's 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 a marvel story rather than a dc story uh low-key's first week was the got the record viewership for a disney plus show so that was good news that's because tom hiddleston is the best man on this planet actually speaking of which kid Mm -hmm. you look up i'm you're gonna have to play this because in reference to tom hiddleston he did a poem it's a really sexy poem that he did and mm-hmm. we have to play it on here. So I'm actually we have to gonna play find it, it on the podcast. Yes, we do. All right. Well, you find but, but, it and uh, play it through. I'll, I'll, I'll send it. We can, we can play it on the Loki variant podcast though. So. Oh, okay, fine. We'll play it. Oh. Okay, next Wednesday. <laughs> yes. We'll do it. And we'll, yes. <laughs> fans. Perfect plug for the variant cast. Yes. Um, you know, also you can find us, find the variant cast on the Racial Draft Podcast feed. Um, See, I occasionally have good ideas too. Hmm. Yes. Yes, you do. Randy, that was really awesome. Since Randy has such a great idea, cash at me at Kia B ism the dollar sign in front. I will be waiting. Yes. Thank you very much. <laughs> and speaking of the variant cast in the middle of the week and low key in the middle of the week, Disney Plus has shifted their uh, original series to Wednesdays so you know no longer will you be getting up at uh, 4 a.m on Friday mornings you'll be getting up at 4 a.m on Wednesday mornings um, yes <laughs> so there you have it messing up messing up workplace productivity Disney plus <laughs> uh, who's working anyway <laughs> what did you say who's working anyway coronavirus people are working <laughs> working you you may be at your office right now i apologize if you are but you may be at your office right now listening to us on the podcast and and to to you i say rock on rock on and they're they're probably in the office right now like yeah why the freak are we in the office right now (laughs) that's correct that is correct so this isn't exactly this isn't exactly a superhero story but I thought it would, would be uh, good for you to know, Kia, that uh, Blackula, are you familiar with Blackula? <laughs> is that a joke? <laughs> I'm just, I don't know. I mean, is that a joke? You know. is, that, is that a racist joke? <laughs> I don't know. Like, all of a sudden, Dracula is black? Like, what's going on here? <laughs> it was a 19, I want to say 1979 Ah, uh, this all makes movie. sense now. They tried to give us oh, 1972 give us Dracula and make him Blackula. Okay, I see. Well, I mean, it, I, I, that is a classic uh, in my household. He was an African prince who went Suck to the blood. He went to Count Dracula because of slavery. He was trying to get slavery oh, abolished. So he wanted to become a vampire, sneak into the master's home at night. <laughs> And then what? No, he went Dr. to Dr. Blood. No, he went to Count Dracula to try to enlist his aid in uh, and into and, 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 and by abolitionist efforts. And Dracula was shockingly racist. <laughs> shockingly, what? I mean, Count Dracula shocking? was racist and was like, "Hell no, I'm not going to help you end slavery. In fact, I'm going to turn you into a vampire and change your name to Blackula because I love portmanteaus." Um, <laughs> <laughs> he's like you are no longer prince blah, blah, blah. you are now blackula and then uh and then you know blackula wakes up in the modern day um gets out of his coffin and and uh, sadly preys on black women <laughs> <laughs> i knew it i knew it i knew it was gonna turn ugly uh-huh yep that's what happens welcome but, to, welcome to the welcome to american black women's reality that is but, what happens but it's Shake going to be there, it's going to be remade it's going to be remade and the beauty of it is that it's now it's all woman, women a black woman is going to a black woman is going to produce it oh so it's just going to be the same story. And now a black woman is just going to keep on telling that story. That is great. Maybe she's going to change it up. 
maybe he's maybe. gonna maybe he's gonna maybe be a revolutionary. No, what I'm <laughs> saying is that <laughs> yeah, I'm saying yeah. what if Blackula like is woke, you know, <laughs> like he's come like he he is in the present day, you know, he's like, Yes, I'm about my people, you know. I, just because <laughs> just because I sleep so during the day doesn't Blackula mean that I'm sleeping. To wake up and <laughs> up black women. Yes, that, that Blackula is just gonna all of a sudden become woke. Yeah, no. <laughs> okay, well, well, I in in the movie's defense, because I, I already went on my little rant last week. So in, in the movie's defense, I will say at least it's not being remade in the 90s because they would have had him like join in, in some street Buffy. known as the Bloods. And I feel like that, that <laughs> <laughs> I feel like he would have been like the, the Wait, gang. Come on, Randy, you know all lives matter. <laughs> that would have been hilarious. He's like you say you're called the Bloods. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like that that 90s urban gang war movie would have been a horror show and not in a good way. So I'm very happy that at least it's not happening then. Oh, yeah. And I do have a synopsis. Well, not a synopsis, but at least a description of what uh, we can look forward to for this. Blackula is an ancient Afri African prince who is cursed by Dracula after he fails to agree to end the slave trade. Blackula is entombed and awakens 200 years later, ready to avenge the death of his ancestors and those responsible for robbing his people of their work, culture, and heritage as they appropriated it for profit. Yeah, he's definitely gonna be woke. So he, like, so it's Blackula who wants so, so, so that was so so that was the the <laughs> new the new uh, synopsis or the the previous. So no, that's that's the new synopsis. So Blackula is part of the ADOS. <laughs> <laughs> no, he can't be. He can't be because he's not a descendant of slaves. He's African. Um, oh, why was I just there? thought about that. Do, do we do we cast an African as Blackula? No, does he have, does he have Domingo. I have already spoken. Coleman I know, Domingo. I know, I know, I know. You wanted Coleman Domingo, and Coleman Domingo is definitely would be like the world's pick. Um, because you know Coleman Domingo, right, Kia? Yes. Uh, I'll just, just in case you don't, I will uh, send you the link. You will Google it. Okay. <laughs> I will. I will send you. I will send you the link because I'm, I'm a good co-host. But yeah, Coleman Domingo would be. Uh, that is the officially endorsed uh, choice of the Racial Draft podcast. But uh, you know, you know, sometimes we don't get exactly what we want. I I have spoken. But if you try sometimes, you, know, you might get what you need. Studio person, whoever you are, I have spoken. It is Coleman Domingo. Period. End of discussion. Yeah, I'm like I said, we're 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 all there. We're we're in agreement. But are we? Oh, maybe we're not. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Randy is always right. Couldn't you see? Except when he picks couldn't you see Coleman? Color. Couldn't you see Coleman with like a whole ass cape? You know, so Kia. I'm just that was a yeah. specifically. Mm -hmm. I could see him going around caping. <laughs> <laughs> that check. was a pun for all of you people. <laughs> <laughs> Emphasis on you people. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Coleman's gonna have it. Coleman's gonna have his. He's gonna be like his shirt open, uh, all silk, and and a cape, and he's just gonna mesmerize the world. And you'll be like, and right. kill black women. Oh, oh, I, oh listen, my. like I said, this new. Like this I new, said, we could reimagine it where he kills just other all women. <laughs> <laughs> he's not he's not trying to kill you he's just trying to bring you into the vampire fold you know he's which, trying to he's trying to give immortality he's trying to give immortality to the people which what if we did that to black men just, then black women will still suffer you this just have to die first black before you get immortality so <laughs> just no big deal black undead lives definitely matter so i don't know what you're talking about um I, I I am here for the uh, vampire black vampire revolution. Um, it will not be televised because vampires don't show up on their television. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, could they be seen in the dark, or is that a scarier version of a vampire? Uh, only well, they're definitely going to flex their teeth, so they will be dark. <laughs> Wait, what if they don't have white teeth? What if they have black teeth? That's 
no, that's not how vampires work here. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know this. We don't know. We are joined, people. Maybe he called them by... Dracula because his teeth were black. <laughs> I, I I don't think that's right. I don't think that, that's right at all. <laughs> um, yes, we are joined by Master Thespian himself, uh, TJ Stooks, most recently lobbying for the role of Lex Luthor. Um, Back and- like I never left. <laughs> you have you have your villain monologue ready for the people. For well, the people, no. Me, okay. yes. <laughs> The Black Lex Luthor himself. But, uh, I, um, a lot of, actually, somebody hit me up who's uh, Asian, was like, that's scary, like how spot on it is. Because, oh. you know, the, the button up. Oh, yeah, yeah the, the look, the look. Yeah, I mean, you, you definitely look the part. And um, the Asian guy just called you up just to say you look scary? What? <laughs> <laughs> it's scary that we can imagine you as the biggest supervillain in the world. I was like, yeah. I, I really, I really like, it was like, you know, who I don't know who said it in the group, mm-hmm. but I was, I they put up a, a Lex Luthor picture, and the most ironic thing on my other phone, I was looking at this, that picture to post the sender mm-hmm. agent actually, and I was like, oh, wait, give me a goddamn second. Yeah, for <laughs> the for the for the listeners, uh, uh, TJ gestured. Um, very back and forth yeah, back and forth, yeah. <laughs> back and forth. Uh, <laughs> gas in spanish <laughs> but um so so we're just you know we we were bringing key up to speed with the stories from last week we had just uh finished up our blackula story and our coleman domingo fan casting for blackula which is spot on and then uh you know but yeah, i had to save i had to save the biggest women. story of the week for last and it involves Batman and Catwoman. You guys already know what the story is about. Um, but am, I, Kia, am I about to lose my shit? But you might. You might lose Probably. your shit. You might Probably. lose your shit. So, oh, no. Kia, have you been watching the Harley Quinn uh, television show? The, I was watching uh, like, animated. the cartoon? Yeah, yeah the animated. I watched yes. that, actually. Yes. yes. <laughs> so, uh, apparently, uh, there was going to be a sex scene between uh, Batman and Catwoman. And Perfect. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I agree. But um, but the producers, they had some objections to the sex scene. Uh, most notably, uh, they did not want Batman to eat the cat. And they said, this is their quote. This is their quote. You can't do that. You absolutely cannot do that. They're like, heroes don't do that. Kia. Do heroes do that? Oh oh my God. Heroes do that. Listen, listeners, listen all. Heroes do that. (laughs) I mean, uh, I don't want to like take it far left, but if you guys go onto Netflix, there's this uh, TV show called Sex Slash Life. You should watch that. That man in there, he is a hero because he does that everywhere. Over there, over there in the pool, etc. Oh Wait, did you God. just turn into Dr. Seuss just real quick? It's like on a plane. <laughs> on the- <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> in the air, in the fair. The- <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Dr. Seuss, that shit. People, <laughs> heroes do that. Uh, how dare they yeah oh my god we at the racial draft feel uh, uh, eat it like sam i am <laughs> <laughs> green eggs the pink yes. eggs and ham yes. <laughs> eat it. he does like them he does like them so <laughs> <I know. laughs> This is a, we are a pro, we are a pro oral sex podcast here at the Racial <laughs> Draft. Um, <laughs> TJ, you're so loving. <laughs> but yeah. So, uh, yeah, and I, and I personally think that they're full of shit on this, uh, in this idea that Batman, a man who covers up all but his mouth with his mask <laughs> and also <laughs> has handles that you can hold on to in his health in his yeah, co- like do they not realize his costume is for fantasizing about that particular thing i, yeah. I feel like it's i feel like it's it's so ridiculous just because like okay 
yes, obviously, uh, we we have like the the canon that that a writer literally tried to uh like make a thing is that he he provides his lovers with like at least eleven orgasms or something like that. He he was like he he has like they they make up all this sexual canon and stuff about him. Like wait, I did not wait. I didn't know this. Batman is oh, yes. like Bruce Wayne oh, yes. is supposedly well known as a you know as a deliverer oh, as a um cunning linguist. Yes, <laughs> like, right. I need a delivery. <laughs> like it's it's like the I think I think the canon is that. Um, the canon, <laughs> but, no, but, yeah. <laughs> but I think I think the the canon is that he he delivers his lovers oh. like the girls that he's with or whatever eleven orgasms or something like that. And on top of that, we want to reemphasize the fact that Catwoman is a dominatrix. Like mm. you're okay with Catwoman being a dominatrix, but oh no, oh like, he's gonna be on his knees. Yeah, like. There, there's no way that that man is clad in that much leather and like ooh, eating woman is, is oh that's too far like no no yeah. that he that that's like the lighter side of what he does with Catwoman. Uh, listeners, and he's gonna do whatever Catwoman says. Listeners, the safe word is prep time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. But yeah. So those were the that was just bringing you up to speed of last week's stories. Um, you know, any uh, any final words about supposedly supposedly Batman being Batman eat the cat, do yes. it, do uh, it. But <laughs> we do have new stories for the current week. Um, you know, some some more superhero than others. Um, some more stories than others. Um, you know, in terms of rumors, uh, there are rumors involving the Olivia Wilde Spider-Woman film. Um, and they come uh, courtesy of our friends at the Illuminati. They, um, you know, she's going to be doing a movie for Sony. So that's questionable. <laughs> um, but it is going to involve Jessica Drew. And they are looking to cast a 25 to 35 year old actress. Uh, she's going to have um, some of the aspects of her classic origin in that, um, you know, her mem- you know, she has the memory loss and she awakens. You know, she was exposed to uh, irradiated, uh, science, scientifically, uh, genetically engineered spiders, um, the radiated blood of many different spiders, and then, um, you know, she becomes Spider Woman. So, you know, it's it, it's going to try. The, shockingly for sony it's going to try to sort of stick with the <laughs> the uh spider woman canon but obviously there were some rumors back in the day that they were going to try to set it in the mcu i would prefer it in the mcu um but maybe you guys feel differently uh randy what do you think uh, mcu or no mcu for spider woman what would you prefer i i i would like that they did it <clears throat> that they did it in such a way similar to how they did with Spider-Man where they like they give room to allow some MCU interaction but you don't necessarily have to you know I mean it, it doesn't have to be that you know concrete. yeah but I mean but Spider-Man's definitely in the MCU there's like they're doing F FML or sorry FMK <laughs> FMK they're doing FMK with the Avengers like you know it's that's yeah, I mean it. I, I I do want there to be interaction because I mean there's a, a number of characters that um, Jessica Drew has ties to. She has ties mm-hmm. to Nick Fury. She has ties to Captain Marvel. Um, she, you know, so I I am hoping that they go in the direction of kind of having that connection, but I don't know necessarily that they need to do it right away. I think they can kind of have like her you know her origin story or whatever the, the story they're going to tell and then maybe as like a mid credits or post credit scene be like hey look this character that is from the mcu she she meets them or interacts with them in some way hmm. yeah i mean i think that there i think that there is enough there for them to do a sony style standalone movie but i would like you i would prefer i would prefer it be in the MCU because of those connections. Um, I think that sadly, when it comes to uh, female driven projects, um, Olivia Wilde has been pretty outspoken about advocating for 
um, you know, uh, female driven projects, I worry that that people, certain people in those circles will be like, oh, it's girls, eh, you know, I don't want to support that. Um, whereas if it was tied to not only a bigger universe, but a more um, established and positive universe in terms of like how it's, you know, again, the Sony universe, we're still not, we haven't quite figured out like what works and what doesn't work. So we, um, we literally had to have a PR guy come out and be like, Hey, actually we do have a plan. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, um, so I'm a little skeptical. However, um, and this is where it kind of crosses our little purview. Would we be a little bit more interested if, uh, Jessica Drew weren't white? Honestly, I had actually um, considered for a while now that that they could probably have because like she's uh, she's British. That's her origin. Mm -hmm. But there, you know, obviously there are numerous different races and ethnicities in that area. So mm -hmm. I would think that she could possibly like um, before they had cast her in another role. I was thinking that Gemma Chan would have actually been really great as Spider-Woman. Like, you know, they, they I, I feel like they could go with someone who may be, um, right. you know, I mean, you know, th there's a lot of room to play with her mm -hmm. uh, ethnicity and, and her race and stuff like that, because they don't have that solidified as being she is specifically a white woman. Right. I mean, you know, and obviously, for those of you who are longtime listeners uh, in season two, the East Asian delegation, uh, sorry, the East Southeast Asian delegation did draft Jessica Drew um, as, you know, in their delegation. So Jessica Chen would be quite the, you know, would be quite the, the visual referent, so to speak, for a um, for, for an Asian uh, Jessica Drew. Stooks, do yeah. you have any? Oh, wait, did I say something else? Jemma Chen? No. Sorry. <laughs> you said Jessica Chan. <laughs> oh, sorry. My my apologies, Gemma Chan. Uh, she is a goddess, and we should all respect her. And she will be an eternal goddess um, coming in the fall. Uh, Stooks, do you have any thoughts about the possibility of race bending, of race bending um, Jessica Drew? Jessica Drew? Yeah, Spider Woman. Hmm. I think that's one character that should stay true to the comics in every really? single way. You think she reason should be white? Why, you think she should be white? The reason why, because we've never seen her in any iteration of movies, in any iteration, not even sure. a, a hint on a name drop or anything. Mm -hmm. right. And I think that that's one of the only characters that should be truly faithful to the comic. And the only reason why I say that is because Mm -hmm. The masses, which I call the normies, the, the masses, it will, it will like, oh my god, another, another Asian person, oh my god, another person, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I hear you, but I, I think that, I think that the majority of people, like, they know Spider Man, mm -hmm. they don't really know Spider Woman, like they, they don't know Spider Woman at all, <laughs> right? Um, now, granted, what I will say is that you have Silk, um, you know, who's Korean American. Mm -hmm. Which is coming out soon, right? Yeah, there's a, a Silk series uh, in development on, on Amazon. So it would, it would, I agree that it would be a little weird if you know Silk were Korean American and and uh, Jessica Drew were also Korean American, for instance. You know, um, people sadly would be like they're two Asians that's crazy <laughs> you know but I think that if for instance you know and it's funny that you had mentioned um you know Chema Chan you know because I was thinking kind of a different tact which would be like South Asian you know if she was South Asian British because she's supposed to be British and there are a lot of South Asians you know who they're all right what's a nice way of saying this in terms of the look of the classic Jessica Drew in the comics, you're really only kind of like lightly turning up the tint, um, you know, in uh, in the on the character. But she could still have all the proportions that we traditionally associate well, with. Okay, uh, so so you you are you are uh, 
you're, you're trying to pitch me on the idea and I, I don't think you, I, I don't think I made myself clear on the subject. So let me clarify. Um, as per my, my statements on Felicia Hardy, <laughs> last <laughs> season, I am perfectly fine with the South Asian women being in that role. Yes, please give me that. I would like that a lot, <laughs> very much. Do you think she should be clear? I, no, no, she should not. <laughs> no, I, honestly, I, I think that she is somebody that you could kind of um, uh, like, brainstorm some different ethnicities because Britain and you know the UK, she she's British, so that's not really like you know. There's a lot of different other ethnicities that that live in that region, and we kind of think automatically a white person when we think of British, but we need to expand our ideas on that. So I, I wouldn't be mad if they were like, yeah, actually she's a light skinned Indian woman or she's like, you know, some, you know, some other race or some other ethnicity. I would be perfectly fine with that. Right. And, you know, I mean, they did mention that they were looking, uh, you know, they were looking in the 25 to 35 range, but like, you know, uh, we here at the racial drafts are big fans of Priyanka Chopra, um, who is a little bit outside of the age range at 38, but I mean, I mean, she's outside of their age range. She's not outside of my age range. I'm not fine with that. I mean, shoot your shot, Randy. Shoot your shot. I'm just, just saying, Priyanka Chopra in the Spider Woman costume. I'm listening. <laughs> right. <laughs> Kia, do you have any thoughts about Priyanka Chopra in the Spider Woman costume? Or just Priyanka Chopra? Randy just needs to shoot a shot. That's all I'm saying. That's, if, if I have my way, there will be a lot of shooting of a lot of shots. <laughs> yeah, it, will get, it, it might get sticky in the spider in the spider verse. <laughs> exactly, but yeah. So the, you know, that's that's the uh, Spider Woman. Um, it's still it's still in development. They're still working it out. But you know, uh, we here at the racial draft, we have. I mean. Notwithstanding, Stooks, you 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 think they should just cast a uh, a pasty white uh, British person, but uh, you know the rest of us think that you know maybe maybe a little color, a little color would suit them. Little pigment. Speaking of a little color suiting a situation, um, the movie Snow White. Kid, <laughs> I assume I assume that you've uh, you, you're familiar with the character of Snow White. Yeah, I've laid there before. Me. Well, uh, they're they're doing a live action, you know, as they do in Disney. They're doing a live action Snow White, and they did cast an actress to play Snow White, who's not white. She wait, uh, what is she? So, uh, you know, we've talked about her on the show uh, before. She's going to be in West Side Story, and she's also going to be in uh, the Shazam movie. Rachel Zegler from your your side of town, from Jersey. Um, she is Colombian. Okay, represent Jersey, yay, but no, Snow White has to be white. <laughs> she's Colombian. She's the only, that is the, <laughs> she is, <laughs> no, no, only, <laughs> only, I'm saying it, only white people take apples from fucking strangers. <laughs> Uh uh-uh. uh, <laughs> like you would get your ass whooped <laughs> and growing up if you took anything from a fucking stranger, regardless of whether it's candy, ice cream, whatever. <laughs> no, no, and no. They need to keep that white. Honestly, Strictly white. Honestly, that that's kind of my feeling as to why I'm like okay with black people not really being in horror movies and stuff. <laughs> like, no, black black people wouldn't do that. That's yeah. That's y'all y'all go ahead and enjoy. We're uh, that's funny. <laughs> well, yeah, TJ. I'm sure TJ agrees with me. <laughs> Listen, I had a lot of fun You're enjoying. I had a lot of fun enjoying the uh, Colombian Snow White uh, drug puns um, <laughs> that we that we did. Like and it was, like was rolling. <laughs> yeah, we were we were like Colombian Snow White, just like Disney and Cameron. <laughs> 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 that is fun that is fun but still like we do not want our children out there thinking that they, that it's so safe out there in the world that you could just be taking apples and anything else from regular random strangers hell so to the no was was that the, is not the world that people with diverse that have that are diverse live in was the mirror mirror queen in snow white the first karen 
For sure. <laughs> For sure. Really think about that. <laughs> He's just like, really? Yeah. Yeah, I see it. <laughs> I mean, she she was so much of a Karen. She had to enchant a mirror to tell her how great she is. Like, right. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, who would so who? I mean, we, we you know this is we're getting way out of pocket, but like who <laughs> who are we who are we going to cast to play uh, to play the um, fairy tale Karen of the uh, fairy uh, the what what's her name stepmother the my, evil, my. evil stepmother queen does she have a name I don't remember I don't think so that's a shame. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, but no, no thoughts. No, no. Oh, wait, wait. Gina Carano, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Hey, no. yo, you are silly as hell, yo. <laughs> um, I mean, I'd say, I'd say make your special effects and do it, do the voice with uh, Mike Myers. Oh no, we can't. <laughs> we can't do that. We can't. We can't. We can't. He's, a, he's an Irishman. He's a Englishman. He's a German. <laughs> uh, I don't feel right. I don't feel right going he's that a, far. He's a, I mean, he could do the mirror. He could be the mirror. That would be dope. Mike Myers is the mirror would work. But he's a, he's a, you know, a troll, I guess. He, yeah. Randy, do you have? I feel like you might have someone in mind. I'm I'm trying to think because like I don't want to just go through like my my generic white woman Rolodex. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like so here, so here's so two things. Do you want to actually make her attractive, or do you want to make her someone that's like not attractive, but like she just needs that validation? Well, I mean, if if she if she's the evil queen, the the original evil queen that we saw in the in the cartoon was. Uh, she was a beautiful woman but the ugliness of her was from just her actions and it was like her expressions were like mean and and like rude and stuff like that so it wasn't like that she was you know because we we need to kind of get over that that pretty privilege idea that like all good people are good looking and all bad people are ugly and stuff like that so we you know Mm -hmm. but i i would i would kind of go for someone who is attractive but not necessarily just on their own looks like they're made up like really kind of you know uh, you know kind of somebody who who is vain and, and does the kind of extra stuff to make themselves look really attractive yeah now i would be remiss if i didn't mention that in the noted uh cinematic classic uh snow white and the huntsman um <laughs> was played by charlize theron which yeah exactly like almost got me to watch just on that principle alone because i am a <laughs> charlize their own stan um i i'm i feel i feel this i feel like she she probably killed the role if we're being honest um and she What's was the, um the chick from edge of tomorrow emily blunt Right, exactly. I, I feel like I feel like you could go st- for somebody who is they Good are one. attractive, but then they do the extra. Like I, I don't, yeah. I don't think Emily Blunt right. definitely could could give us that kind of villain vibe. Um, like good, the beautiful good. villain that people yeah. love to hate. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I could see it. I mean, yeah. obviously, they already used uh, uh, Angelina Jolie from Maleficent. Right. But exactly. um, She's perfect by far. Yeah. So no, but Emily Blunt. I mean, I, I could see it. That that's that's not a bad casting. So let's let's see if they beat our let's see if they beat our fan cast because Emily Blunt is solid. Ooh ooh! Actually, now kind of now that I've kind of gotten my mind uh, going in that direction a little bit, I think maybe Anne Hathaway might not be happy. Ooh no! You know what? I feel like uh, Anne Hathaway would kill the role. But people are already predisposed to not liking Anne Hathaway, and that could be the kind of thing that, like, she never lives it down, um, because she, like, did you see her in the Ocean movie, Ocean Eight, I believe it was. No. It, was it was. She was a good. It was good. I enjoyed that movie. Oh, I, I did as well. She was so good in that movie as kind of like a character that you're not supposed to root for, um, and then you find out some things 
um, that I'm not going to spoil, but Randy should see it. I think you'd like it. Um, yeah, yeah. Anne, Hath- Anne Hathaway would be would be a great casting. And didn't she play like a princess in like a Disney thing? I I think that she. I mean, I, I know for a fact that she was in the the Alice in Wonderland live action thing as like the the white queen or some something. She was like the good guy. Though. It wasn't like a it wasn't like the red queen or something. She was the good guy. Yeah, that is that is that is another solid casting. So there we go, Anne Hathaway and or um, Emily Blunt as the as the uh, mirror mirror queen, um, as we said, one of the first Karens. <laughs> Additionally, there's some some more news. Um, this is still kind of. I mean, I'm going to transition. We're going to say from like from Latino to more Latino. Um, did any of you guys see In the Heights this uh, over the last couple of weeks? Yes. I still have not seen it, so do not spoil it. However, okay. the star, one of the stars of In the Heights, Anthony Ramos, um, you know, he's been pegged for a lot of star projects. He is about to star in a Transformers movie. Hmm. Um, and that additionally will be starring alongside Dominique Fishback. So yeah. so it see, it sounds like this Transformers movie is getting a little getting a little on the brown side and they're being directed by Stephen Cable Jr. who directed Creed 2. It's even browner. Yeah. Even, even people of color doing a Transformers movie and not wait, in the background. Wait for it. Wait for it. This Transformers movie Kia, Kia, would you like to find out the title of this Transformers movie live in the podcast? Yes. It is called Transformers Rise of the Beasts. <laughs> it sounds biblical. No wonder they decided to start letting black people come in. It's, it's going to be set in Brooklyn, New York. My hometown. Um, and we'll also go to Peru. And it's going to involve a beast-like Transformers, um, um, for those of you who are familiar with Transformers Beast Wars, a cartoon from the early 2000s. Uh, I don't really understand why robots are transforming to animals. Um, I, yeah, I don't understand. I also don't understand why they're going to be transforming to animals and also being in the contemporary uh, world. But Stoops, I guess... Too. Just, just a little bit. Just a tad. Um, I believe that the leader of the of the Autobots are is Optimus Primal, and his gorilla, a robot gorilla. Hopefully, <laughs> they do not find a black actor to um, voice him. Um, but, but Stooks, do you have thoughts about Beast Wars, Rise of the Beasts, uh, Brooklyn? And uh, brown, black and brown people leading a Transformers <laughs> movie involving animals. Um. <laughs> okay, well, you put in that light. I'm like, fuck this movie. But, <laughs> but they said, they said the, the, okay, the so Transformers Wars fever. This one holds a very, they hold a very close piece of my heart. All right. I was so like, so give the people give the people a quick sell of like why they should like Transformers Beast Wars. Okay, so the difference between the biggest difference between the cartoon and the live action, the plot was they was in a, a foreign planet with no humanoid life, humans mm-hmm. or anything, so they had to adapt. So they basically took the form of the animals there. Okay. Then but in Brooklyn, it looks like they're trying to, they're going to land in the zoo. <laughs> they're like, damn, these cars ain't working. Like, and then they're going to they're gonna see this, you're going to see that. And like, um, I've been trying to be like, hmm, that's a leader. Let me turn into that big monkey. Then, <laughs> yeah. See, as, but, and, and, and it's really sad for me because like as a native Brooklynite, um, you know, it's a little bit older than, than some of the listeners. Um, I was very familiar with a, a, a group of, what we'll just call them, uh, streetwise individuals uh, called, the De- <laughs> called the Decepticons. Um, and and uh, yeah, you know, the, I find that, you know, we're, Decepticons are coming to Brooklyn and it's not even going to be the, the G1 version. It's going to be these, uh, these, these, these animal versions, the, 
the, predic <laughs> the Predacons and the Maximals? Is that what it is? I'm all for it, though. Like, because I say that uh, the original Transformers in the, 70s, in the late 70s, right? To me, that no, was the, that it was story. the 80s. It was the... I'm, the, I'm sorry, the early 80s. Yeah. It, it, that holds the best story to me. Mm -hmm. The second best is the Beast Wars by far. And and I just love the drama. I didn't, I didn't, okay, like I like how they add, you know how they add new characters, like, mm -hmm. oh, they've been here, they've been here. And uh my favorite was Scorpionok. And right. well, um, he was you know, wasn't he one of the headmasters? He was he was the guy that was going back and forth. Oh, okay. Between the, the, the Predacons and the Okay. Whatever. Maximals, whatever the fuck it is. But yeah, they the reason why I liked it was because it was just the drama of it while being in a natural environment. It was just them. Right. You know, so there weren't people, there, there weren't humans. No, there was just them. And so, they had so that's party. so that's really weird because this movie is clearly going to have people in it and it's clearly mm -hmm. going to be set in the you know, I think it's gonna be set in the nineties. So just to clarify. Even more, it so even more of a reason where like that is literally when the Decepticons gang were like popping in 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 New York. Um, I'm it's very pretty cool. Seeing, uh, you think a cheetah run down the street, and then he jumped in the air, and then you see him transform. <laughs> but he's you know? not a cheetah; he's a robot. <laughs> like, even <laughs> even a robot cheetah is still a robot. <laughs> you know, um, you're right. You're right. Like, because where's the thing? Like, if you transform into a car, people will think you're there's there's a car, you know. Like, if you know, uh, Bumblebee was a beetle, and then he mm -hmm. was something else. Like, you know, like a if smell. you, right? It's like well, a car. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> but the point is, like, you you have a a beetle, and you can drive that beetle. Like, what was going to be a lion walking down the street of Brooklyn, and, uh, and people no are going to be like. What'd you say? There was no lions at Beast Wars. Oh, well, that's what are they anti lion? What's going on there? You no, know, there was gorilla, there was a gorilla, cheetah, rat, uh, tiger. <laughs> <laughs> the you, slid, you just slid the rat in there. You slid the rat in there. Like, I mean, now, like, I feel like it's New York, a rat transformer is probably apropos. <laughs> okay, but, but now, I, I mean, I, I'm 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 not necessarily you know I, I'm not versed on Transformers. I, I I have nothing to say as far as them getting their jungle fever on. That's that's their business. What I what I have a question is uh, what I have a question about is why exactly are they deciding to make it a period piece, and why exactly did they decide on that particular setting? That's the stuff that's setting me off and making me so, feel like there's some weirdness about so, it. So so the thing is, like, did you see Bumblebee? I didn't. Oh, you should see Bumblebee. It's, it's one of the better yeah, of the movies. Movie. And that movie was set in the 80s. Um, okay. I think that this movie is going to be a direct sequel um, to um, to Bumblebee because Optimus Prime was in um, was in that movie and okay. at the end, sorry to spoil it, um, sets out to find a, other Transformers. So I think what's going to happen, Optimus Prime is supposed to be in this movie as well. I think he's going to discover these um, beasts, war, whatever you want to call them. Um, I think he's going to discover them and he's going to anoint them as like you know, part of the Transformers crew and, you know, it is taking place in the 90s means it's going to be a continuation of the Bumblebee story that takes place in the 80s. Now, okay. I don't I don't know if John Cena's character um, from that movie, who was a sort of a military anti Transformers guy, I mean, who knows what bag they'll dip, dip into in terms of um, fleshing that part out. We have been joined by from a Latinx allegation, Carlos. And you know, do you have any thoughts about the the uh, people of color uh, introducing introduced into the Transformers lore in a animal themed uh, Transformers movie? I mean, wasn't uh, the first Transformers uh, 
Jazz, the, the black Transformers, like, what are you <laughs> bitches? <laughs> I Transform- mean, Transformers has been a racist franchise the whole time. <laughs> I mean, no more racist than under Michael Bay, right? Where yeah. the, he he introduced us to the uh, the coon, the <laughs> Autobot coons. Um, yeah, it, it's been a rough go for us. Even the but, even the humans, the the um, the soldiers, like they're in that first movie. It's like uh, the dude. For, uh, Ferdy's husband, with uh, Josh, Josh Duhamel, yeah, and yeah. then it's like and Tyrese. Tyrese, and then like Latino guy who was talking <laughs> about like mom's arroz con pollo or something, and then, <laughs> and, then, and then like Josh Duhamel is like, stop being weird with your weird foods. We're talking about American things. And I, remember, I'm, I remember being in theaters being like, uh, we're just gonna pretend that that didn't happen. I'm to for that uh, guy. I mean, yes, yes, that we are because it's Michael Bay. Uh-huh, uh-huh. That's it. <laughs> well, I, for one, I am a sad, sad Transformers fan, and which means I'll probably still be there on day one, <laughs> even though, even though I am uh, mocking this, and it's also going to be set in Brooklyn, so I have to represent. I will say, I'll be right, I, I really be right liked, there with you. I really liked Bumblebee. I thought it was a really good movie. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, apparently Randy has not seen Bumblebee. Oh, it's really it's oh. like it's wow, like really Randy. Sweet. Everybody's seen Bumblebee. I'm I'm mad that the one the one time that I actually finally decide that nope, f this, I don't want to see this stupid Transformers movie. It's the good one. It's the good one. <laughs> that's, that's, that's frustrating. <laughs> yeah, you try to get out, and they keep pulling you back in by making <laughs> make and you know, sadly, the possibly the best Transformers movie made the least money. Yeah. Right. Which one is that? That's Bumblebee. Bumblebee. Oh, Bumblebee. The, the, there was the one I say that in the Transformer Michael Bay verse, I guess. Mm. Um, the one where Optimus Prime got killed. That one was good. I was like, mm. I, that one was good. <laughs> I don't remember which one because I feel like he gets killed in every movie. Like, kill, kill, <laughs> kill, kill, kill. <laughs> That one where uh, in the forest where he got jumped by everybody. He got jumped. <laughs> <laughs> he got like, jumped by like six of them. Was it was it a Shia movie or was it a um... no non Shia? Oh, it wasn't Shia. So it was a Mark Wahlberg. Yes. Transformers. I think that's <laughs> we call it was a Transformer. <laughs> <laughs> that was the one where that was the one where his daughter was dating a guy, dating a guy who had a card of all of the states and their ages of consent. <laughs> <laughs> like like how do you how do you put that in your movie sir yeah, right. <laughs> like, no answer for that like you're supposed to root for like this is a character you you, you want not to die <laughs> he's like I, no. I like the uh the original transformers movie the the lines that specifically just the lines that megatron has he's got like the oh. best line like the Op, when it's Optimus Prime and Megatron, it's like it's only us. You know, it's only one us shall stand, <laughs> one shall fall. It's only you and me, Megatron. It's only me, Prime. Like that's a good <laughs> <laughs> or like when when um when uh, you know black stereotype Transformer is like, you want a piece of this? It's like I want. <laughs> how about pieces? And he like breaks someone out. Like those are good lines. That that I was I was in, I was impressed with those two lines of dialogue from the entire <laughs> Transformers franchise pre Bumblebee. Bumblebee is a good movie and it is a shame that it made the least amount of money. I, why? No. Why? Why did it because I enjoyed it also. I I think everybody who's seen it enjoyed it. I think it made the least money because it's the what fifth movie, fifth yeah. Transformers movie and yeah. And, and it's the one that returns. came after it's the one that came after the like the most like panned of yeah the, the one where the bottom fell out yeah so people was, were uh, people were a little bit wary soldier. of it you know they were just kind of like the last night yeah people were just kind last of like night, i don't so. know um and then it came out at a, in a really crowded um mm-hmm. season like i think it came out the same weekend as both aquaman and um mary poppins mm. so even though that people even weird. even though people liked it 
it just didn't find an audience. I know that when I watched it, the the, the guy, her Haley Steinfeld's friend in the movie, <laughs> um, whose name I can't remember now, his actual name. Uh, but I I watched it. I was like, I like this guy a lot, and I think that if they have a live action Miles Morales, he should maybe be in the running in that room. And then it turns out he's the guy from the Spider Man. MCU movies who's uh, doing the news at the beginning. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, he's already in the universe. Right. But, but he is really funny in those parts, too. Yeah, that actor's name is Jorge Lindeborg Jr. Yeah, there it is. He is a Dominican actor from, oh, from Dominican Robot. Oh, he's from the Dominican. Wow. <laughs> yeah. He is Whoa. 25 now. Um, uh, I think he- <laughs> so he's like oh, he Tom was, Holland's age, right? Yeah. Um, and he was a, also in Alita: Battle Angel, which I don't know what they're doing with that movie. If they're doing more, um, I mean, all right. they, they're um, with that movie, the production is hell with that movie. Do you have insights? Were you were you working on that movie? Oh, no, I, mean, I mean, like I, I put my name in an audition. They okay. they definitely looking for people. And gotcha. um, I don't know. I haven't heard anything. All right. Well, we will transition into another um, project. Not um, sure. Let's let's do this. Who here? Show of hands. And uh, listeners, you're just going to have to uh, imagine the hands. Uh, who here uh, was a fan of the Smallville television series? I, I liked it, but I haven't seen it in years. Well, I, I have never seen it. Well, I, mean, I haven't seen it fully all the way through. I've, I've seen like episodes here and there. I can say that I probably fell off the last season. When he gets to Metropolis for me, it gets really choppy. But, mm-hmm. um, but there's like, I think season three of that show where like it's more about Lex than it is about Clark is really good. I think. Yeah, like there's a there's an episode that features Johnny Cash's cover of Hurt, mm-hmm. which is like a really good episode of Smallville, like a really yeah. good episode of television. Well, oh. yeah, I watched it all the way through. I've watched every episode at least once, um, and I haven't given it a rewatch since it was off the air. But Tom Wiling, who or Tom Welling, sorry, who Tom played uh, <laughs> who who played Clark Kent um, for <laughs> admirably for many years, um, still wasn't believable as a high school freshman um <laughs> like the man was like six foot two um and had a deeper voice than any 14 year old that i've ever met right <laughs> <laughs> but um he's he said that he and michael rosenbaum who played lex luther um many people's first uh hero supervillain ship um, <laughs> um they are working on an animated Smallville sequel. They want to continue the story of Smallville in animated form. Mm. With quote, as many of the cast members as we can get. Look, <laughs> I thought it was quite interesting that the same week this story dropped was the same week that Allison Mack was trying to get some level of clemency. Um, I'm listen, I'm a Chloe. Chloe I am a Chloe. I am a Chloe Stan. So if even if she has to have, be on house arrest. Uh, recording <laughs> recording her lines we are going to get uh classic chloe um, we animated animated chloe did not commit any of those crimes that, that, that alice and matt committed so i'm here for it i mean while we're at it let's just have a cosby show animated revival then oh <laughs> right oh, exactly oh, you see oh, yeah no, no, yeah no. <laughs> no. I mean, you know what the kids and uh, <laughs> I mean, you. I mean, that is that would be an interesting thing for someone to remake the Cosby Show as an animated series with someone else with doing the, uh, with, with a really voice. good Cosby imitator. The only, the only <laughs> what, problem what, with that what? is that the money goes to Bill Cosby. Right, he's still Ooh. a producer. <laughs> yeah, he still created because, the show. Dude, I got a whole pitch. Like, bring back the Cosby <laughs> Show. But like Theo is the patriarch, and, and Cliff is dead. Oh my god! Yeah, but got, yeah, but but the, you still don't solve the problem of like the, the Cosby money, Show. The money, no, no. yeah, exactly. Well, no, the problem yeah, of the Cosby Show. It would have to be called the Huxtables. 
Right. <laughs> no, but I'm saying you don't solve the problem of the Cosby show being a beloved show that people want to watch and right. not having a way to watch it. Yeah. You know? <laughs> it, I think this means show. I think this means that we need to actually I can't say this <laughs> like, like uh, I can't I can't advocate for crimes to be committed against admittedly <laughs> horrible people but you know if that person were to if that person were to like fall down a flight of stairs and oh my god and have to call down you know call for the police to to take them to you know take them to the hospital um maybe they don't maybe they instead <laughs> maybe, they, maybe they instead uh make themselves a, a bacon burger dog I mean, when, oh when, my yeah, God. when Mr. Cosby is relieved of this mortal coil, we will, we will see the show. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, he's I he's personally think, years old. I personally think that all cancellation expires upon death. Um, there is a, there is a certain, there is a certain R&B artist um, who, I, I I don't see cancellation ending on death because I, I I still have a grudge against HP Lovecraft. Like, mm. nah, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not here for it. All right, we'll 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 we'll, we'll flesh it out. We'll try to figure it out. Um, oh, Lord, we're getting back to Smallville. I'm sorry. Yes, getting uh, back yeah. to Smallville. <laughs> Chloe, the Chloe yeah, I problem. Mean, so I already read. I bought every issue of the Smallville season 11 comic book nice which purported to uh continue the um the Smallville series which was basically just bringing in all the comic book characters um that they didn't have the budget for <laughs> for the show <laughs> it's like green lantern <laughs> why, why why didn't we know about you before batman <laughs> like, we, like, like you just go to Metropolis now. It was it was it was there was like a whole Justice League in Smallville that's, season eleven. That's funny. And um, yeah, and it wasn't the the cheesy, um, you know, like ten dollar ten dollar Justice League that we got in Smallville <laughs> season nine. Um, so yeah, I, I'm here for it. Hopefully, you're here for it as well. And um, yeah, I just thought it was a nice little nice little fun feel good story. I like that he dropped the information on a cameo. Oh, of course. Like he probably did not think this was gonna leak out. <laughs> he was just like, <laughs> just for you, special fan who paid for this, I'll let you know. <laughs> maybe, maybe by the time it comes out, I will have binge watched and binge read all of Smallville. Hopefully. I wonder if Smallville's aged well now that like now that CW superhero shows are a thing like mm -hmm. are very common at the time, it was by itself. Right, but yeah. here's the thing. HBO the Max? format the format of the CW shows still do borrow, you know, they, they still they still borrow pretty heavily from the Smallville model. Yeah, that's yeah. true. And which borrows from like Buffy, like right. Freak of the Week, you know, Scooby Gang. And and the Dad. acting and Michael Rosenbaum's acting holds up, I imagine. His he is like the Lex that I think of when I think of Lex Luthers. And that's I think that's saying a lot. <laughs> Oh, are we about to see some Kevin Spacey have. again? <laughs> no, no, no. Stooks uh, uh, is you know wants to be uh, he, wants to, he wants to be uh, Lex Luthor, um, but he hasn't uh, given us any Lex Luthor um, villain speeches. So, I mean, until until it happens. Yeah. Um, okay, however, I gotta act the part. Yeah, listen. He's out there for the drafting. He is out there for the drafting in in the season three. Mm -hmm. um, so <laughs> <laughs> that is that was not the sound of someone who wanted to put any serious money down on Lex Luthor. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I, I as much as I wish that we had actually gotten him last uh, season, I mm -hmm. I'm kind of reconsidering. Cause, I mean, I, I like when when they put out the synopsis and stuff like that for the the different comics um, coming up. They don't always mention like everybody who's going to be featured in that particular issue. So it's kind of difficult to try to say like, oh yeah, well because he's going to show up here, here, and here, I'm going to go ahead and try to draft him. And and so even though he might end up being like a surprise appearance or a cameo or something like that in a comic. So I mean, I I do actually. Like we, I, I believe we got the character in season one, 
And, you know, I, I thought it was a really good choice, but I, I I don't really know. I have to weigh the options. All right. Well, you know, we'll, we'll keep, we'll, we'll keep our options, you know, when you're, when your budget, Terry constraints go kind of go down and you've only got like, you know, like a dollar or two left, maybe, <laughs> maybe submit a $1 bid for, for Lex Luthor. Um, <laughs> He's Another that, like that gas station. I can't fill up my tank money for Lex Luthor. Like, let me get, let me get six bucks on Lex Luthor. Dollar <laughs> thirty five. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's only fitting that we transition from one animated project, um, Superman related, to an animated project that is Batman related. How many of you watched Batman Ninja? Nah. Where uh, apparently they're totally okay with appropriating uh, Asian culture for Batman and um, make him into a samurai. <laughs> Watch the Not trailer and then I think I saw the past and the future at the same time and like I, could, I left my body. I was like, what <laughs> is this trailer? <laughs> so so I, I, I took the responsibility to watch for everybody else and um, it was bad. It was bad. Yeah. Yet the the animation was phenomenal. Okay. But the story, the story just confused the hell out of me. Like it literally confused me. I was like, what is going on? And I and you know, and I tried to endure. And um me trying to endure, I woke up like eight hours later. <laughs> <laughs> it, it puts you right into a fever dream. I um, mean, at least you got a good night's sleep. <laughs> so I mean, in, in the defense, um, well, is this a defense? It's a defense against the claims of appropriation, I suppose. Uh, it was, it was uh, directed by Junpei Musasaki um, and animated by Kamikaze Duja and Yamato Work. So it's, it was a Japanese production, and Batman is a very popular DC character. So I can understand why they might say, let's try to adapt this really popular character and his mythos into feudal Japan. Um, but, Why not? <laughs> but they look they looked awesome. This this is not yes no I, I they yeah phenomenal. It was just mm. yeah. But I haven't even dropped. This is all shot. Here's the chaser. They're going to do a stage play of Batman Ninja. In <laughs> what? Here? What? In Japan. <laughs> That makes a little more sense. Oh, yeah, that, yeah, yeah, that makes ten times more yes. sense. So, uh, you know, listeners, if you're in Japan, uh, let us know how it goes. Let us know how uh, will it be better. Will it reach the the lofty standards of Spider-Man Into the Dark? Um, <laughs> I thought you were gonna. I thought you were gonna mention the other uh, the other Batman uh, uh, manga related news but <laughs> wait what's the what, what's the... the joker mommy uh oh manga. yeah uh yeah i um i will we'll spare the listeners the uh joker raises uh bruce wayne <clears throat> as a baby i you know, i at, at least if we're if, at least we're not going to cover it in depth i just want to say LOL, just because <laughs> like of all the other stuff, people are begging, crying, pleading for DC to do other things outside of Batman. And they're like, no, we're going to exhaust every possible reality <laughs> of Batman ever. And ever. even within the Batman, like the Batman fan was like, can you do something other than the Joker? It's always the <laughs> right. Joker. And they're like, but what if the Joker? <laughs> Not to mention, concurrently, you know, with the Batman, they're doing the Superman manga. There's a Superman manga? Yes. What's I that? Am I am more interested in that. The first, the first uh, um, issue released like two weeks ago. Interesting. Hmm. It's, it, it's actually... Pretty good? Not bad. Not, okay. not bad. Okay. I'll, I'll, okay, I'm gonna put a link me to that. Give give me links for that. I need to. I yeah. need to. What? Let me put. I will say, like, I didn't consider Batman Ninja um, an issue of like appropriation because I did consider it a Japanese production. Uh, is that? 
yeah i mean you know we came back around on that you know it's <laughs> Yeah, like it's it's not it's not appropriation per se, but it, it's one of those things that like it ra- you raise an eyebrow when you when you hear about it the first time. You're like Batman Ninja. <laughs> I mean, Definitely. like I I when when you say Batman Ninja, the first thought that comes to mind is Batman goes to Japan. Like regular Batman goes to regular now current Japan and fights ninja. That is mm-hmm. what comes to mind for me. Right. I mean, yeah, like Not, Batman Begins kind of set him up as like, he is a ninja. Yeah, that's the thing. Right. Like, I, yeah. I, I do think of Batman as a ninja. But, yeah. You know, even though, because you know, he uses a lot of ninja style tactics. Right. Mm. Yeah, so, but... so that would be, you know, it would be it would be an interesting story if there was kind of like a prequel of that period where Bruce Wayne is training to be a ninja, and mm. he's you know he's battling battling other ninjas. Yeah. And of course, he's not Batman. He's Bruce Wayne Ninja, which doesn't have the same kind of ring. I always love when uh, when something's supposed to be a ninja and then it ends up being a samurai. And like, you know, that's not the same thing, right? No, <laughs> like, definitely it's not. It's like <laughs> Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3. It's like, you're ninjas. Why yeah, are exactly. you samurais? <laughs> oh, oh, clear people. <laughs> it's like, it's Japanese. They won't know the difference. Right. <laughs> I do dig in the last samurai where you see that ninjas are a completely different thing. It's like a special ops group and they're dope. So we have another DC related project, which is much, much, much less well known than Batman. And that would be Madam X or Madam Xanadu. Uh-huh. Um, I, I'm guessing, Randy, that you're a little bit more uh, conversant in this character than, than some of us. Oh, yes. Yes, I am. So, so go ahead and and let the people know about Madame Zanadu. Okay, so I'm I'm not like an expert. I'm not gonna you know pretend like I'm you know like like I know everything. But what I know from her is that she is um a, a fortune teller. Uh, you know, she <clears throat> um does tarot divination stuff like that, and she also knows magic. She's you know um very prevalent throughout the, the the magical side of the DC universe and she's run alongside Justice League Dark and and she's really ancient and really powerful and and just you know very underrated as a character generally so okay well they are the series that they're working on right now <clears throat> is going to involve JJ uh, Abrams super producer uh, and his uh, partner slash wife. Uh, Katie McGrath, and they're bringing in uh, Angela Robinson, who I believe has worked on uh, The L Word um, and other Disney, pro- I'm sorry, Disney, sorry, other Warner Brother projects. But give me a second, guys. She also worked on the movie Debs. Do, 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 do. Debs. The movie, the she was a producer on the show Hung. She also directed Professor Marston and the, or no, so she wrote uh, Professor Marston and the Wonder Woman. So you know she's she's in she's a uh, a showrunner uh, of of some acclaim. She also worked on True Blood. She's and she's going to be developing this for for the series. I like I said I don't know the first thing about Madame Zanadu or Madame X is what the series is going to be called, and I. If I were to guess, probably going to be a member of the LGBT community. Um, if I were to guess, this is never <laughs> going to get <laughs> It's sad, but he's probably right. This is just like, like, please stop announcing these things, Warner Brothers. Like, I would be so much happier if you just dropped it. Like, oh, next week, this thing is coming. Like, oh, awesome. You made it already? But you announce these things that are not going to get made, um, you know, coming in two years, and then mm-hmm. you never hear from it. And it's always, uh-huh. it always has to do with a marginalized community. It's always like, yeah. oh, Latinos, here comes your movie, or oh, we got a black woman director to make a big, you know, big budget movie, and then uh-huh. it never happens. Yeah. And we get, we get Batman again. <laughs> you know, like yeah. I mean, this is all facts. 
I, I do understand that if you're the agent for any of the people and you know that this project is not getting made, <laughs> it is very important that you get the publicity out there yes. so that your so that your client can get hired for something else. <laughs> right? It really like does feel like a like, strategy that Warner Brothers is employing. Like, hey, you can you can announce that this is coming out with this Y list character that no one knows of. You know, like <laughs> and, 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 yeah, yeah, we're we're doing. <laughs> Madam Xanadu, like who knows this character other than Randy? Like, MCU <laughs> um, copy. If I was to, if I was to bid twenty five cents on Madam <laughs> Xanadu, no one is going to challenge it. Um, so it's and you know you can announce that this thing is is going forward and uh, it's in it's in production, it's in the works. Like those are always the general term in the works, mm. and yeah. then. And then, and nothing will happen. And then they'll announce, you know, a year and a half from now, there will be one day where 13 projects just are not happening anymore. Yeah. And we'll move on and we'll do it again. But um, maybe in the meantime, um, Angela uh, Robinson, you said, maybe maybe mm -hmm. she gets a job on another Warner Brothers thing because of this. You know, right. like it's, it's this weird, it's this weird game they play. Yeah. And look, it's a hustle, right? You know, you you got to get the gig. You, you secure the one gig in order to get the next gig. Right. You know, I'm sure Stooks, I'm sure you would love to be cast in a DC project that's never going to come out um, <laughs> just so that you can be up in the trades for a week and have your agent secure you some actual paying gigs. Yes. I mean, like, like Lex Luthor is a very prominent villain in the DC yes. book. So, so are you saying, are we breaking news right now that the Lex Luthor origin <laughs> uh, television series for <laughs> HBO Max, um, weirdly enough, David Simon is, is writing this. <laughs> David Simon is developing for HBO Max, a Lex Luthor origin series starring uh, the racial dress owned TJ Stooks. Uh, it's in development. Um, <laughs> Luther. The villain. <laughs> the man. The god. <laughs> yeah. There we, there we go. Uh, go ahead and aggregate that. Go ahead and aggregate it. <laughs> like, but, but like, like DC would, Warner Brothers would be like, Dr. Cornell West has been tagged to write Luther uh, for, from a black perspective. You know, like, like, being directed by Ryan Coogler and the, you know, and, and Spike Lee and, <laughs> and but to be released, you know, like it's in the works. It's in the and, works. And you, it's being and, developed. It's, it's being developed. Know. It's in development. You know, these things, you know, we're always in development and it just so happens that the things that never get forward are anything having to do with a marginalized uh, cast, director, whatever. I mean, character. it's true. It, it's true. Cause, I mean, the even the CW, they had, um, they were going to do, like, supposedly they were going to do a show of not not just Wonder Girl, but also before that they announced, I think it was uh, 13. That was supposed to be based on Tracy 13, who is, like, a magic uh, yeah. user as well. Her, her, and yeah. she's, she's, um, she's biracial, half Asian. And she's also a queer character, bi uh, bisexual. So they were like, yeah, no, <laughs> that just yeah. never happened. Needs more development. Like, honestly, the Superman thing, if it wasn't for the the invocation of J.J. Abrams' name, mm -hmm. I would have little to no faith that yeah. anything is happening with that. But well, here's the thing. J.J. Abrams JJ is involved. Abrams. Right. J.J. is involved in Madam X. So that's why I'm feeling a little bit more confident about it. Mostly because they're paying him, you know, one quarter of a billion dollars. Um, <laughs> they they shouldn't be wasting his time on projects that aren't going to come out. Right. But you right. never know. Uh, they, yeah, I mean, uh, they have wasted money before. They have wasted billions in the AT and T. Uh, if you're an AT and T investor, you probably are um, feeling some kind of way at this very I mean, moment. They've they've <laughs> also wasted seventy million dollars recently, but that's neither here nor there. Mm. They also wasted two years of my goddamn time waiting for Batman vs Superman. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, 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 even going back uh, to Superman Returns, 
that movie, remember like the, the hurdles that movie had to, to, to cover to make money because they were still they were still adding in the money they had thrown at the Nicolas Cage Superman movie, which had never materialized. So it was uh-huh. like that was all part of the budget of superman returns so that movie technically cost like 250 million dollars or whatever the hell it was back in 2000 what was that 2006 or whatever and it was like it's never going to make its money because back then movies just didn't do that like they didn't did you, you hear count did on you, every comic movie to make a billion now dollars. now did we are lucky we, now we are lucky that uh it wasn't a movie that we need to revisit because you know it was directed by brian singer and uh prominently featured kevin spacey who um, you know, <laughs> the less said, the better. <laughs> so, I mean, it's good that we don't have to talk that much about Superman Returns. We can, treat, was, it, we can treat it like non canon. There was an hour long uh, YouTube video explaining the entirety of the the canceled Superman, the, the Justice League Superman project. Oh, and okay. I sat there and listened to the whole thing. And I'm like, holy shit, this would have was been. That- now, was that a more rewarding experience than watching the Snyder Cut, if we're being honest? <laughs> I'd say yes, because you, you know how you have something in your head and you see mm-hmm. it, you're like, yo, this would have been fire. But then, like, you see something from somebody else's imagination, you were like, okay, you should have added, but the, this, why this? They, why is they, this why I was wrong? You know, it, it, it spent years hyping itself up. There was no way that it's going to be what all it was making itself out to be, period. See, like, like, like I said, okay, like I said in, in past episodes, me, I did not know that there were so many differences. I'm like, what the hell is a Snyder Cut? I don't even know who Snyder is, initially. Mm-hmm. Don't laugh at me. But <laughs> I was, I was, when I, when I, was taught into it when I was educating into it. I was like, God damn, there was 80 pages of the script you didn't use? Like, God damn. Like, I didn't, but I didn't know that, mm-hmm. you know, until I got educated last year of all times. I didn't, I was like, shit, I want to see this Snyder Cut now. Mm-hmm. It was good, but it didn't live uh-huh. up to my expectations, like Randy said. Yeah. It was good. Yeah. I am. <laughs> I mean, uh, it was for the for the for the, for the listen for the listeners that was the sound of air quotes. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was relatively better than what we got in 2017, and yeah. like you know that's about as good as he was going four, y- four <laughs> years to to get a you know just a, just a little a little uptick. And I will yeah. say like I enjoyed uh, the Snyder uh, cut. I, I enjoyed the Snyder Cut. I didn't, I didn't necessarily enjoy the Whedon version of it. Mm-hmm. I did enjoy the Snyder Cut. I wouldn't say it's a good movie because it is still a Frankenstein's monster of, yeah. of, you know, choices and reactions. But I mean, like, I also <laughs> enjoy, like, the, the Jessica Alba Fantastic Four movie. It's not good. Yeah. Well, my, I, I mean, you know, not to completely relitigate what we've constantly been relitigating, but... <laughs> you know you can always move forward you know you can always do a sequel to a movie that's not that good yeah. and just improve upon the original considering you actually like remaking have awareness remaking yeah. that movie especially when you're talking about a a uh, connected universe doesn't really help things yeah it, it just it, it felt very like I don't know. I, I don't want to get too too SJW on it, but I mean, it felt very like the white guy could like be okay with the fact that his movie didn't do all that great, and he got a do over. Like people don't get movie do overs. Who the freak gets a do over for their movie that doesn't do well? That's um, crazy to me. I feel like you know. Now I'm really gonna take it there. There's, <laughs> there's certain there's certain people who who want to do over of things that happened. You know, just a few months ago. Yeah, um, yeah. What you mean? And, and what they you were mean? willing, and they were just willing to storm the Capitol to 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 get that do over. Oh, you and, crazy. and 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 the movie ah! was released around that same time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I I, ha- I felt some kind of way when it just like 
he just was not letting it go, was not conceding that the movie didn't do well, was not trying to move on. Release to to the Snyder votes is what I'm saying. <laughs> um, this guy's crazy. <laughs> oh, Trump. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know why I found out this weekend that there was a president, uh, a, 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 a rally a post presidential rally that that, 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 uh, that that appears to operate in this in this uh, alternate universe where uh, where that man won the election. Wow! Yeah, guys, so, I, I think we should prepare for some sort of incursion. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, their reality I mean, and our reality listen, are going to but this at some point. This isn't the variant cast, but. but uh, <laughs> somebody's timeline needs to be clipped. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, they, had a, they had a protest here in El Paso for Trump. They, we we are we are in for a crisis on two Earths. Like that that is what it is right now. We're we're very much like we're we're in danger right now. This is a yeah. thing that needs to be addressed. And I guess this is an appropriate note to go into our final story because it's not one of the like more hilarious stories, um, oh. which is why I sort of saved it for the end. It involves a, an, a uh, writer, a comic writer of some, some renown, oh. um, well-known um, you know, Warren Ellis. Um, I, you know, to use the journalistic speak, is embattled as it were, because of uh, situations of his, his own doing. Um, with regard to um, using his power in the comic book industry to um, coerce women into uh, relationships. Um, obviously, this is sad um, developments, um, things that we do not hear advocate for, and no one should advocate for. Um, however, um, when called to account for, for, for the things that he's done, um, he kind of went into a little bit of hiding and then resurfaced with a new project that uh, Image Comics was willing to, um, you know, give him money and support to uh, basically be his comeback vehicle. There was a fair amount of online outcry over the week. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's a sad thing to celebrate, but we, you know, I guess we sort of have to that image decided that they're not going to go forward with this project um, after that outcry. And, um, you know, this is an example of every now and then, um, you know, people use their voices for, you know, for a good cause. And, and some of the, some of the time these businesses listen. So, you know, hopefully uh, Warren Ellis uh, is held to account and is con you know, continues or tries to um, let the let the healing, uh, let the the women that he victimized um, have their their say, have their words, um, be amplified, and you know, obviously there are a lot of people who are fans of his work, and maybe one day after he is you know fully held himself accountable and made amends, they can enjoy his work with a clear conscience. Does anyone have any other thoughts about uh, the Warren L situation? Um, I, I, for one, I wish that cancel culture was nearly as powerful and, and uh, dynamic as people like to make it out to be. People love to try to act as though like you know, oh wow, white guys, they, they're in so much danger that if they if they uh if they uh you know if if they espouse this wrong think then they're going to be canceled and people are just not going to associate with them anymore. Like no people people love to try to find excuses to allow predatory behavior um you know various levels of predatory and and harmful harassing abusive behavior and they're fine with that as long as that person is their friend or that person is like a, a an entertainer that they like 
or, you know, something like that. And it's just not right. I feel like, you know, you can't uh, force people on on this broad scale to, to realize the wrong in that. But it will never not strike me the wrong way to constantly see these folks who, you know, they they are outed now recently it, it's not a it's not a long time trend that this kind of stuff has been happening recently people have felt like they have the strength to come forward and admit that this guy did this you know he he treated me this way and you know people still go to bat for this guy they're so quick to try to say oh well you know let's let's uh you know i i, I think he's really trying to do better and i really think they like Give, give him some time because there are some people who who don't go away because they feel the shame or don't go away because they feel regret for their actions. They go away because they think they can weather the storm, the, the, the crap storm of like the bad press. Mm-hmm. So we have to analyze his actions according to, I mean, what does his past behavior show? His past behavior does not show a person who is, you know, um, penitent about what he, what his actions have been. So, uh, a manipulator their 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 main weapon in their arsenal is that they are constantly being given benefit of the doubt. Mm-hmm. They are constantly being kind of like, okay, well, yeah, maybe he didn't mean it that way. Or maybe he's not really such a bad guy. Maybe that was just, we just caught him in a bad day or something like that. No, we have to assume the worst possible about these people because if we don't, we're going to keep falling into the trap every time. We're going to keep allowing these people to just persist. And, and like you, you, Harvey, Harvey Weinstein, that guy did not happen in a vacuum. He's mm-hmm. like the most obvious example of horrible guys that have made themselves, um, you know, that, that have built this kind of predatory career. And that's only an example that we can physically see. And so we, there, there's vastly more that we're not seeing. And so we have to be kind of on our guard and, and holding ourselves and holding each other to account that when we hear stuff like this, even the chattering and the kind of whispering stuff, it may not all be public, but even the chattering and the whispering stuff, <clears throat> be be on your guard and just be, you know, be introspective and, and be aware of what's going on around you. Don't let it persist if you see it happen. Yeah. I completely agree with that yeah. wholeheartedly. Because I, I grew up, I have all systems. So, you know, like I've, I've always been forced to pay attention to my surroundings. Even now, you know, um, when my daughter my wife is with me you know uh back towards the wall please uh, like it's not nothing it's just what i've been raised to do because I've, I've been protecting my sisters for so long you know and um i just feel like the people like you said the predatory actions that people display that be like oh maybe not they, they didn't mean it like that uh, you know maybe they didn't you have to take every single every single one of those advances seriously mm-hmm. because because you never know like how detrimental that person is to the next person or, or to one of yours. You know, right. I take and whenever I see that, I, I cut it at, cut it at the right there. Like, nah, mm-hmm. you're out of here, but you know, I don't play them games and my big ass, I scare everybody. So mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah. No, I don't play that. And yeah, and I think like these cases of like where it's not as clear cut in terms of like, it, it wasn't like violent rape. It mm-hmm. wasn't like, you know what I'm saying? These things where the, the stuff we've almost been conditioned to look out for, it's, right. this is coercion, right. you know, this is power dynamics. Um, generally, like it's, it's a, obviously a much trickier arena, right? Mm-hmm. And I don't always feel that someone deserves to lose their job for stuff they do in their private lives. But when you are using your position in your profession as a, you know, and becoming a gatekeeper for, for women who, 
who want to move forward in this industry and you're saying, well, I can help you if right. this, you know, it's, this wasn't like your private life. This was right. your professional work. Yeah, exactly. And that's, where, yeah. And that's the, that's a like, you know, that's, that's a huge red flag that this person should not be in a position of power in this industry if they've clearly proven that they will abuse that power. Right. And, you know, and, and again, like, you know, there's a lot, there's always a lot of talk about what it would mean for that person to be ostracized from the industry, you know, the, again, the notion of quote unquote cancel culture, mm -hmm. but, but his actions pushed so many women out of the community and made them right. not feel safe in that community and probably prevented the community from having these voices. Well, not probably, definitely uh, prevented the community from having these, these voices. And whatever his contribution is to the culture, to comic culture and to, to the industry and to the, the community around it, he has to he has to acknowledge that and we have to acknowledge that that it's it doesn't happen in a vacuum right you know that whatever his contributions they also come with this serious serious transgression and yeah. to that end you know he's got to pay a price it, yeah. it's just it's such a big ugly mess to even think about just because you know the 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 flip side of the, the 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 allegation of the guy abusing his power, you know, for for the, <clears throat> these vulnerable women, is that on the other side we have fans, uh, quote unquote fans, who will look at a woman who is rising in the industry, and they'll accuse her of trying to like sleep her way to the top and all this yeah. other stuff. Mm, I mean, you, you're you're okay with flinging those ugly accusations, but you don't even realize that that's a, a problem that it shouldn't be possible to do something like that. It shouldn't be, you know, um, the the sexual exploitation had ex sexual exploitation not been a problem in the industry we wouldn't even have an idea that there was some possible way that you could quote unquote sneak your way to the top so right. like well, you you know that this harmful stuff exists and you're okay with it as long as you know as long as you're getting your quote unquote good content as long as you're getting your like your your fun little comic story. And that kind of stuff to me, it, it doesn't sit right with me and I'm never able to, you know, kind of uh, engage in those conversations because I, I, you know, I end up taking it a little bit too personally. So it, to me, I, I, I want to see some more of the, the canceling part of the cancel culture. Like, give me some more <laughs> of the, the harsh consequence part. Because, I mean, I, I don't really care about the, 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 the unassuming, unsuspecting white guy in his feelings and feeling like, oh, wow, people are viewing me as a bad person. Yeah, because you did something that was bad. Right. If, 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 if you did something that was bad, then guess what? People are going to feel a certain way about you. And if you didn't do it, then you should be doing everything in your power to contribute to helping eliminate it. It shouldn't be a matter of trying to preserve your quote-unquote honor and your reputation and your job and your money do the right thing just because it's the right thing, not because it somehow could, could reflect back on you or, or because it can make you look bad or whatever. Just, you know, I mean, you, we shouldn't have to have these lessons of like, well, dang, I guess if you're going to, you know, if, if you're going to exploit your, your people in the industry, you, you better make sure that you're, you know, I mean, we shouldn't have to have these lessons like this. It should be like everybody knows that they don't want to be mistreated. Everybody knows they don't want to be exploited and abused and stuff like this, and especially not on so personal a level as you're, you know, sexually, you know, treating you that kind of way. So, I mean, it just it's it's so frustrating that we get this cancel culture type crap coming up in conversation, and especially from people who are so uh, so so headstrong in the way of trying to cancel some 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 demographics that they don't particularly care for. So, you know, I, I just miss me with all of that. Right. Yeah. And I think the, the, you know, the part that you said there about we're okay with the 
idea of sleeping your way to the top. Like we obviously abide it because it's still here. Mm -hmm. And then as you, you said, as long as we're still getting our good content, I think it even goes more than that. It's there is a, there are a faction of men who are okay with that because in their minds, one day that will be them and they will be able to yeah. exploit their position for, yeah. you know, yeah. in exchange for sex. And it allows, it allows men, um, certain men to have that in their mind is like, well, that's how, you know, she, clearly she's not more talented than me. She right. just, right. She's yeah, that's what I was, them. that's what I was thinking that it was like having that as an avenue to denigrate women. Right. Yeah. Is is a is a, a a tool that men can use for a variety of purposes. Right. You know that 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 if a woman uh, achieves um, in this industry, in any industry, there there can be a group of of men who can show up to be like, ah, but it's not legitimate because um, you know you took advantage of an inherently um, unbalanced situation that we created. Um, and in the face of that uh, uh, sexual coercion, um, <laughs> you, right. know, you, you potentially behaved you know, in a rational way to not have your, your opportunities completely limited. You know, it's right. so weird. It's like the, 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 the society that judges women for um, doing what they can, if we're being honest, in this situation that was not of their making, um, but does nothing and is far less willing to scrutinize the behavior of men who set up that situation in the first place. Yeah. Like why, like it's, it's, it's a weird thing to be like, oh, you know, you're sleeping your way to the top versus, oh, you're at the top and you're only going to provide opportunities to people who sleep with you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like the sec, the latter is so much more worth criticizing than the former. Right. Exactly. And but I me, guess this is like the oh, difference sorry. between I'm I'm sorry, just to, to put a bow on it. Uh, mm -hmm. This is like this story is the difference to me between like Aziz Ansari and Louis C.K. Right, where it's like mm -hmm. what Aziz did was in his personal life on a date and it's awful what he did and he's apologized for it and said he would re-examine it and he didn't realize what he was doing was mm -hmm. coercive and and you know I am willing to allow for someone to grow from an experience especially when it gets called out what Louis CK did was to was to force women to watch and masturbate but like they were stand-ups they were women mm -hmm. who were in the same profession as him, who right. then, on top of being cornered by a, a larger person who was forcing you into this you know, situation, um, even if it's, it's not violent, it's also like, if I walk out of here, my career is over. Yeah, if I it was professional anything, misconduct. Exactly. Right, it was professional so, misconduct in which, you know, accountability for professional with misconduct is often <clears throat> professional. And those women, some of those women um, said, like, I never did stand up again after that. Yeah. We, we lost wow. talented people because of what Louis C.K. did. And, and there has really been, there hasn't been as much growth from that. Like, he, he apologized in what seemed like a very heartfelt apology, and then at least a very thoughtful apology, and then has not, his, his act since then has, has seem to double down back into mm -hmm. well, well, that that's precisely why i'm unmoved by the apology i don't really care about the emotionality right. behind it i mean you can be you know so I, i've you know we we've seen uh, on like maybe on a, a crime show or something like that on forensic files or whatever they they do you know they, they have the person standing trial and they're 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 guilty and they've been found guilty blah 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 and their little statement before they go off to the electric chair or whatever is like, oh, I'm so, you know, they go break down in tears and all that. Like, who cares? You, you, you damaged lives with what you did. Mm -hmm. And so when, you know, what, what, what could you, you know, I mean, obviously it's not to the degree of murder or something like that, but right. to, to do 
harm, you have to show, you have to physically show that you're trying to move beyond that. Right. And, and you know, I, I don't really care about the words. I, I want there to be, you know, not, I mean, their actions too, but I guess I, I want the reaction from other folks who have the ability to hold them to account. Because, you know, fans, we can write letters and, and scream over the internet all we want to. But for them, they, they may not necessarily have the emotional connection. They can fake the emotional connection. What we need to see is the, the fiscal thing that hits them in their wallet or the thing that, like, Dang, my my uh my sponsorship got effed up because of this thing that just happened to me, or you know the thing that I just did and, and brought on someone else. So you know, a, as much as I want them to have a change, their change is not nearly as pressing to me as seeing the victims get some kind of recompense. Sure, I'm like I'm a believer in in the restorative justice model of of you know criminal justice and that and so part of it involves an apology you have to atone you have to say i did this thing i am sorry for this thing and that the the key is that's not the end that's very right. much the first right. step and right. now okay prove it and and yeah. so and so yeah I, I agree with you randy like the apology it even if it is thoughtful, even if you mean it, even if you mean the apology, yeah, saying it didn't do anything, you have to now. Yeah, you have to do the work. Make up for it. Yeah, you have to yeah. do the work. And so, now, yeah, that that's but, but what. I, how do you, how do you, how do you atone for that? I, that's that's on every individual to sort of, you know, yeah. find their, you know, find the right and approach. I mean, because because it, again, there's there's atoning in a broader sense. And then there's atoning in a more interpersonal sense, right. and you know the the victim slash survivors of of the harm, they're not they're not in a position to have have their um, forgiveness dictated to them, right? You know, like exactly. they're they have to decide what makes things right, if if anything, right. you know, yeah. they have to decide what what atonement looks like, um, and some for some people it'll never be found right. but you know but 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 if you're the person that did the harm you just have to sort of sit in that truth you have to ex and, accept and, you know and, and in this particular situation i am not feeling like warren ellis is like you know no nah, I'm, I'm not feeling it i'm not yeah. feeling it. it i mean i don't think popular. anyone's i don't think anyone's felt that he's taken any steps uh towards accountability well, I mean that that he hasn't taken any steps, and that others have really taken any steps. Like Image canceled the thing, but they canceled the thing after people were begging them to cancel the thing. Like it, it's not like it, it's not there. It's not automatically like in your mind. Wow, this guy is a, a, a trash bag. Why the freak are we dealing with him? Like no, you have to be told not to do that. And, and, I'm, I mean, that's that's fair. But I mean, at the same time, like if they had doubled down on it and continued to publish it, we'd be having a totally different conversation. Oh, you know? yeah. Like like they they at least saw the error of their ways and took action. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's just a it's just a horrible situation all around. I wish that that people kind of had, uh, you know, I guess that we placed more value on the 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 conscience of, of folks in that that uh kind of way rather than like i don't know I, I just hate that we have to like keep reminding people to 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 care about other people it just sucks yeah i mean that's probably the best place to leave it on um that sucks that we do have to constantly remind people to care about one another um you know this is a little bit of a somber end to you know what's often often a more light show, but it's a necessary conversation. Um, you know, as always, if this is your first episode, I apologize, but we do different things every week based on what happens in the world. And, uh, you know, sometimes it's important to, you know, to, to have the hilarity, which, you know, the first half of the show, and, um, but to, to be a little bit more introspective about, about being, um, being 
better humans in this industry that we love in this um, endeavor that we love. And, um, you know, hopefully you you're back with us for the ride for, for, for the next week when we kick off season three and the bids start to the bids start to fly. And, um, you know, we will, we will be, yeah, uh, we'll be making it rain. Uh, we will also be in a sense, uh, celebrating the independence, um, with some, by, by by putting people to work, I don't know. I haven't figured it out. But uh, <laughs> celebrating independence by bidding on people. <laughs> yes, yeah, that was Juneteenth. Uh, yes. <laughs> had we planned, had we planned better, we would have we would have uh, started off on Juneteenth. But um, yeah, like I said, hopefully, guys, uh, everyone, go around, go around with your socials. Uh, you can find me at MTFIII on a variety of platforms. You can find the Racial Draft at Racial Draft Pod on Twitter, at Racial.Draft on Instagram, Racial Draft on Facebook. Um, we do, we also have a Patreon if you'd like to help support our project um, as we continue to, to, to try to do bigger and better things. We will always take your money. <laughs> um, I'm, on Twitter. The tone. I'm, I'm on Twitter at Randy S0725, and you can use my hashtag superpower list. Okay. Carlos? Yeah, Carlos Freitas Jr., uh, JR, not Jr., um, <laughs> and Freitas is F R E Y T E S. And uh, I say a lot of stupid stuff on Twitter, so that's fun. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, TJ Stoops, leader of the Negroverse. Um, TJ Stooks84 on Twitter, TJ Stooks, S T U K E S on Instagram, um, Facebook, TJ Stooks. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah follow this man, TJ Stooks, everyone. <laughs> follow this man. He was recently on television, uh, winning, winning, winning uh, big cash bucks that um, he never uh, donated to the, to the show. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even get it yet. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, but yeah, you know, alongside his uh, his best best friend Dwayne Wade. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, D Wade is a man of the people, and we actually keep in contact, which is weird weird as hell, you know. And um, so, so you're saying that Dwayne Wade is going to appear on the Racial Draft podcast? Yes. That's what I'm hearing. That is that is what I am hearing. His nickname um, was the Flash. Hey, all right. <laughs> Uh, stay tuned. Stay tuned. Season three when we will get. Okay. So, uh, so since he's known as the Flash now, now Carlos, you have to you have to give me the art. I have to see. It. I mean, you got uh, oh. <laughs> after that stupid that ass Kangs, <laughs> 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 the Kangs of Cochrane, the Kangs of Cochrane. No, you got, no. What you have to do is you have to do you have to do the iconic. You have to do the iconic LeBron Wade alley oop thing. You know, with, oh, with, with the Flash, <laughs> but with Le who would LeBron be uh, in this in this one? Would he be like Green Lantern? Mm. Um, Let's see. The King. The Let's, King. Who's so someone who King. changes costumes a lot? <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm just trying to think of like the you know, so Flash, like who are his like you know friends you know, like friends in the, in the superhero world. King, it like, cause you want to associate something with King James, the King, right? No, no, no. I, I want to, I want to have, if one's going to be the flash, the other one's going to be like Superman, I guess Superman. I, I guess, guess, I guess, boring, LeBron, but yes, yeah. LeBron as Superman. <laughs> boring, so. but yes. But let's leave it here, guys. Uh, you know we're 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 done for this week and until next time all things are possible <laughs>